evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to McDowell Field for tonight's 2019 homecoming matchup featuring the Hornets of Pemberton Township High School versus the visiting Blue Devils of Ewing. At this time, we ask you to turn your attention to the track where we will introduce our participants for tonight's homecoming festivities. First, we have the freshman class with their theme, Moana, with advisors Mr. Handlin and Mr. Salma. Next come the sophomores representing the movie Coco, advised by Miss Glassman and Mr. Roberts. Here comes the junior class, whose theme is Toy Story, with advisors Mr. Boschnek and Miss Cornish. And finally, here comes the class of 2020 with their theme of Alice in Wonderland. Advisors Miss Meyer and Miss Schleifman. Thank you to all the classes for their hard work this week. And now, please join us in wel welcoming the 2019 homecoming court. We begin with introducing the freshman princess, Lola Jenkins, escorted by Jesse Tuck. Next is your sophomore princess, Leilani Johnson, and her escort, Avier Crawley. Your junior princess, Deanna Mora, escorted by Gregory, Gregory Floyd. And now your 2019 Queen candidates. First up, we have Brianna Ross, escorted by her parents, Technical Sergeant Rory Ross and Technical Sergeant Retired Johnny Ross. Brianna is a member of the Yearbook Club, the Homecoming Committee, Community Cleanup, and the softball team. She plans on attending Rowan College at Burlington County to major in business and marketing. Our next member of the senior court is Mackenzie Scott, escorted by Cameron Pryor. Mackenzie is a member of the varsity softball team, a volunteer in her church. She hopes to attend the College of New Jersey or Rutgers University to major in psychology. Next, we have Melody Beam with her escort, Calvin Garcia. Melody is a varsity cheer captain as well as a member of the Y Club, Habitat for Humanity, Yearbook Club, and a People's Choice winner. She hopes to attend Montclair State University and major in television and journalism communications. And our final candidate is Rayana Henderson. Rayana is escorted by her best friend, Jermaine Scott. Brianna is a member of the varsity track and field team, girls basketball team, and also serves as a football manager. She hopes to attend North Carolina Central University or George Mason University to major in sports management. Next, we have your homecoming king candidates. First up is Curio Crawley. His escort is Taasia Brown. Curio is a member of the homecoming committee and an avid supporter of PTHS sports. He hopes to attend Full Sail University and major in music. Our next candidate for King is Emmanuel Highsmith. Escorted by Kayla Quinones. Manny is a captain of our football team, a member of the weight club, a People's Choice winner, and a volunteer at the Pemberton Early Childhood Education Center in our community. He hopes to attend Monmouth University to major in exercise and health science. Yeah. 
Next, we have Noah Sensky. Noah is escorted by Haley Finelli. Noah is the debate club vice president and a member of the We Help You Why Club, as well as Holiday Smiles. He hopes to attend Stockton University to major in political science. And finally, we are proud to announce the 2019 homecoming queen and king, Miss Allison Matthews and Josh Laude. The queen Allison is escorted by her mother, Cheryl Matthews. Allison is a member of the marching band, concert choir, choral leaders, concert band, and PTHS musicals. She is also a member of the All-State Treble Choir, as well as the first place winner in the Pemberton Girls, or Pemberton's Got Talent show. She hopes to attend Ithaca College to major in music education with a coordinate major in dance. Josh Laude is escorted by his mother, Sini Laude. Josh is the drum major of the marching band and a member of the jazz band, woodwind ensemble, brass ensemble, PTHS musicals, talent shows, and the choir. He hopes to attend the College of New Jersey to major in music education. Congratulations to all members of our 2019 homecoming court. At this time, we would like to recognize our senior members of our marching band as well as our cheerleaders. Our first senior of our marching band is Caprice Edgar, escorted by Martin Hoffman. Next, we have Araceli Lacona, escorted by Lorraine Lacona. Next, we have Josh Laude, escorted by Sini and Charisse Laude. And of course, Allison Matthews, escorted by Jack McCallum. Next, we have Gabrielle Palante, escorted by James and Shelly Palante. Next, we have David Mawsonne, escorted by Yuritsi and David Mawsonne. And finally, we have Adam Lopez, Escorted by Elaine O'Malley and Sharon Lopez. Let's have a round of applause for our senior members of our PTHS marching band. Now we'd like to introduce you to the senior members of our PTHS cheerleading squad. First off, we have Captain Melody Beam, escorted by Coach Diamond Normal and Calvin Garcia. Next we have another captain, Madison Beaver. Madison is escorted by Carla Beaver, her grandmother Crystal Leap Loper, and Uncle Colin Leaper. Another captain is Alexis Webb. She's escorted by her mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Webb, as well as Nicola Curry. Our next senior member of our cheerleading squad is Nicole Alvarez, escorted by her mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Alvarez. Next, we have Aurora Kent. Escorted by her teammate, Madison Beaver, as well as Carla Beaver. Next senior member is Faith Byers. She's escorted by her mother, Trish Byers, Daniel Cavanaugh, and Jesse Mailer.
And finally, last but certainly not least, we have Sarah Phillips. She's escorted by her mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Phillips. Well, there you have it here on Channel 19. You got your uh, homecoming court for you. We got senior recognition for cheerleaders as well as our marching band. And we should have a good one coming up here. We're going to have uh, Kevin Emmons and Keith Carter, two PTHS grads on the, on the call tonight for this good uh, – West Jersey football division matchup. The Hornets playing their first ever home game or under, first ever game under the lights here at home. Uh, we got a pretty cool uh, scene here for you at McDowell Field. It's it's a you know it's historic night here, and uh, we're glad we can bring it here on Channel 19. And that was your homecoming uh, festivities prior to the game. But as we mentioned here, we'll be back shortly here with the kickoff of the of an historic event here at PTHS. It's the first ever night football game. We got the Blue Devils of Ewing coming in here against the Hornets. The Hornets are three and four, so they can go to a 500 tonight with a a big win. And I know I mean you can't get any more hype than playing here in front of your home fa fans at night. It's never been done before. So uh, Coach Johnson, he's had the guys fired up all week and uh, when we come back from this commercial break we'll have Kevin Emmons and Keith Carter with the call from this homecoming 2019. Stay tuned we'll be right back. The Pemberton Township Board of Education and Channel 19 are proud to bring you another sports exclusive. The Pemberton Township Hornets are playing the Ewing Blue Devils tonight at William McDowell Field. I'm Keith Carter, along with Kevin, what's your last name? I'm sorry. Evans, Kevin Evans. Kevin, Kevin. it's not that hard to remember. <laughs> so, first night game for the Pemberton Hornets here at William McDowell Field. It's homecoming day. The Hornets on this near sideline, all green. Ewing over there in their white tops, black pants. The Hornets come in today, three and four on the season. Ewing Blue Devils come in one and seven. Kind of a moment of silence coming up now. They're having the coin flip right at midfield. Hornets and all in green tonight. A little bit of a cool night tonight here at William McDowell Field. Getting cooler now as the sun's going down. Would have been a great day for football. Even better night. Well, I know last year I've seen these two teams play each other up in Ewing, and it was a rainy day that day, very sloppy game. So we're lucky to have no rain here tonight. Beautiful weather today. I was hoping the ref would have a mic on so we could hear the, the coin toss. A lot of times they forget to turn it on. I don't know if he does have a mic. I was trying not to talk over him. Ewing will call the coin. Or it just looked like they won the toss and they deferred. Sorry, Ewing won the toss. They deferred. 
So the Hornets are going to receive first. That was a great look of the four captains for the Hornets. Emmanuel Highsmith, Antonio Flores, Cole Davis, and Anthony Hamilton. And now go to the marching band for the National Anthem. Permanent Township Color Guard, right at midfield. The Hornets are three and four on the season, like I said. They came up coming off a win last week against Bishop Eustis. They won 35 nothing. So they're looking to go on a two game win streak. Ewing played Bishop Eustis on the 18th of October, and they wound up winning 30 to 27. A little bit of common of opponents there for the Hornets and Ewing. So the Hornets are going to start receive off. They're going to receive the ball here. William McDowell field. Our sideline is filling up quickly. Lots of alumni tonight here at homecoming. Lots of students in the stands at the homecoming courts. Parking lot's full. We got a nice little turnout here tonight. I pulled up at 5.30 thinking I was going to get right in on this side, and parking lot was completely full, so I parked across the street. I think number eight, Zaire Glatton, number eight back to receive. On the other side, looks like number 25, Matt Hendrick. A little different with the lights off. I'm sorry. Number eight is Reynard Henderson for the Hornets. And Nazir Johnson, number 25. To kick off is Tia Harris, number 33. Short kick at the 20-yard line up to the 25, 30. Yeah, right about the 35-yard line for the Hornets. Short kick. Let's see, is that 25? Yeah, Nazir Johnson. Looks like he came up limping a little bit. I'm sorry, that's 28. Gabriel Rivera. And as sorry. I mentioned earlier, the Hornets fell to Ewing last year 14 nothing, so it's a perfect opportunity for them to avenge that loss. And here they are with the ball in the first drive. Prime opportunity for them to go get some points early. Looks like Reynard Henderson is in the backfield, in the shotgun. False start already. For Ewing jumped off sides. Octavius Sharkey is our quarterback. He's a senior this year. Five-yard penalty. Five free yards right up to the 40. Three wide receivers to this near side. One to the top. Sharkey in the shotgun. 
Handoff, run outside by Henderson. First down and more, past midfield. It's about the 46 yard line of Ewing. Reynard Henderson, great carry. First down and more. Cole Davis to this near side, number 24. Looks like number six. Antonio Flores to this near side, or he's in the slot. I think it's number 11. DeVray Foster. Three to this near side, two in the backfield. Sharkey gets it. Fake handoff to Flores. Good move to the 40. First down, dragging players. Great reception by one of the captains, Antonio Flores, number six. Point is now back with back-to-back -back first, first downs, down. just the start they needed on this first drive. Antonio now going to the far side. Two wide receivers on both sides. To Flores again, another first down. That one's a little closer. I thought it was rough. Right on the line, and they're calling another first down. Hornets now in almost like a hurry up. Emmanuel Highsmith now coming to this near side, number five, with Flores and Davis. Foster to the far side. Henderson still in the backfield, and he gets the handoff right up the middle. Great blocking by the Hornets. That's the Hornets' first play without a first down, and a big pickup, though, of about six yards, seven yards. And they're in the red zone now, down at about the 15-yard line. Great blocking up front by the Hornets. Still in this hurry-up offense. Fake handoff. Sharkey keeps it right up the middle. Oh, big hit. And bounces right off and still. Another first down for the Hornets. Inside the 10. First and goal for the Hornets. Early here at William McDowell Field. Hornets still in a hurry up. Sharkey looking for the play. He wants to go quicker than even the coaches are going. He's like, let's go, let's go. Foster to the far side. Davis on this near side. Shark with the handoff. Inside. Touchdown. No, short. Just short. Great run by Henderson. Right to the one-yard line. That was really close. I thought it was in. Hornets bringing in new players right at the goal line. Fred's about as small as in number seven. Nigel Middleton, number 13's into the game as a fullback, looks like. Touchdown, Hornets. That looked like Sharkey with the, the carry. It was hard to tell. I know that. I think it was Sharkey. It looked like it, but I couldn't tell. It was a lot of people right there. I thought Sharkey got the... The hand, the snap, Antonio Flores, number six, was right behind him. It was a huge eye formation. Three running backs behind and just pushed him in. Hornets will line up now for the extra point. Like to go for one. Sharky's a holder. Good hold. Up and good. Great kick by number 13, Najee Middleton. Hornets now up 7-0. Big first drive here. With 9.23 to go in the first quarter, Hornets got down the field quick. Just the drive they needed to start the game. I think the Hornets had six or seven plays total on that drive. And most of them were first down drives or first down plays. Could see the cheerleaders at the bottom. 
It's going to get dark in the stands, but light on the field. As the sun's starting to set here at William McDowell Field. I'll check that at halftime to make sure that Sharkey got the uh, one yard run. And then Middleton with the extra point. Four Hornets, seven nothing lead. Back to receive for Ewing. Mickey Gibson, number six. Middleton, the kickoff for the Hornets. Flag on the play. Hornets must have been off sides. Night game. Some of the boys probably got a little excited. Want to get down there and make a big play. So it's a five yard push back for the Hornets. Looks like Bryce Sims, number 23, on the far side, and possibly 27, Jameel Robinson on this near side. Some of the numbers are harder to, to see from the angle. Kick off, short. Right to the about 40-yard line. Tackled in there by number 36, David Israel. So Hornets defense coming up now. Ewing offense taking the field for their first time. Ball's right about the 40 yard line. Great look there on William McDowell Field with the lights in the background. Two wide receivers to this near side for Ewing. Motion. Hand off inside. Good tackle there by the Hornets. Great penetration up front there by the defensive line. Back to the original line of scrimmage. That was a run by Mickey Gibson, number six. Quarterback Tariq McKinney. Number 10 for Ewing. Second down. In the shotgun. Drops back. Pressure. Throw to his near side. Great catch. Great tackle by Davis. Reception by number 17. Rafael Torres for Ewing. He's one of the captains. Tackled on the play by one of our captains, Cole Davis. Great tackle by him. Gain of about two on the play. Big third down here. Third and about seven or eight. I'm going to say eight. Scoreboard says eight also, so. Three wide receivers up top. Running back in motion. Throw to that outside. Missed tackles. Last effort, first down. Nice catch by number six, Mickey Gibson for Ewing. A couple Hornets had a chance to stop him before the first down. Ewing picked up first down there in Hornets territory. Rafael Torres is near side, number 23, Bryce Sims. And number 11, Jalen White. High snap, hand off, inside. Just short of the first down, number six, Mika Gibson. Gibson with another huge gain there. That was a pickup of nine. Second and one. 
Just a simple handoff run to the outside. Could see Ewing on that back side behind and on their sideline. They have some kind of board that they put up. Hand off to inside. Not Gibson this time. Another first down for Ewing. I think that was number 20 for Ewing. Whistle on the play. Down, Timeout Hornets. Timeout. Titus Tolliver, I think, number 20 with the first down there for Ewing. Coaches for the Hornets didn't like something, so they call a timeout. Try to reset the defense. Hornets are up 7-0. Keith Carter along with Kevin Evans. Emmons. I said Emmons. I'm trying to say it. It's not that hard. 646 here. Homecoming under the lights here at William McDowell Field. Beautiful night. I thought it would even be a little colder, but it's not too bad. I mean, we're in the box up here, so that's not so bad. Ewing's driving with their first drive of the game. Titus Torres, number 20. He's in the backfield. Behind quarterback, Jalen White. I'm sorry, number 10 is Tariq McKinney. He's in the shotgun. In motion. Fake handoff inside. Handoff to number 20. First down and more. Touchdown, Ewing. Titus Tolliver with a big 34-yard run for Ewing for their first score of the game. Blue Devils strike back quick. Both teams now with the score on their first drives. We'll see if they can tie it up here or will they go for two? They're, they're going for two, it looks like. They're keeping McKinney in the game. Tolliver behind him. Stack to that far side. Three wide receivers. Roll out to that side. Pressure by the Hornets. Play on the back side. Good defense from Pemberton. Pressured in there by number 52 for the Hornets. Henderson with the deflection. Corey Rivera. He put pressure on the quarterback for Ewing. And then look like number nine or eight. Henderson, yes. There's a flag on the play. Must have been a late flag. Hornets defense staying out there, it looks like. Personal foul against the Hornets. So Ewing here will get another shot. It's a two-point conversion. Half the distance Ewing to the goal. Ewing now brings three wide receivers to this near side. Tolliver in the backfield again. Mateo Rodriguez taking the snap, number one. Hand off. Good hit in there by the Hornets. And stopped. Great hit by the Hornets, number two. Over here, good. Crawley. Great stop by the Hornets, so two-point conversion is stopped even after that big personal foul. So the Hornets are up 7-6. 6.38 to go here in the first quarter. Didn't look like the Hornets defensive coaches were too happy with some of the plays, and they actually called the timeout during Ewing's drive. So... Ewing will kick off. Heading out there for the Hornets is number 28, Gabriel Rivera. And number 8, Raynard Henderson. The up man, number 50, Anthony Hamilton, one of the coaches. And number 13, Najee Middleton. In front of them are 5 and 6, Highsmith and Flores. Hornets were successful in their first offensive offensive drive. Let's see how they respond here following the Ewing score. 
Ty Harrison to kick off, number 33 for Ewing. Hornets get it at the 20, up to the 30, over the 35, about the 37 yard line. Reynard Henderson with the kickoff return. Hornets offense back on the field. First down, Hornets on their own 38. To this near side, Highsmith and Davis to the far side. Foster and Flores. Sharky in the backfield. He's in the shotgun. Fake handoff, throw to Flores. Wide receiver screen. Pick up about eight by Flores. Just short of the first down. Flores with three receptions already here from Sharky. Flores now coming to this near side. Two halfbacks behind Sharkey. One split out to each side. Davis to this near side. Flores got nobody on him. He wants the ball. Pick up a short. Flores had nobody on him. He was trying to get somebody's attention. I mean, the safety in the middle, number five for Ewing, stepped over a little bit, James Joseph, but... Flores could have just caught and ran. Flores coming out, number 15. Julian Diamond checking in. He looks like he's checking into the tight end position. That's with two in the backfield right now. Yeah, fullback. Hand off to five. High Smith. Get close to the first down. Now they're calling him back behind the line of scrimmage. He must have been down. They're calling him like back by the 45. So it, he must have lost a half a yard, but it's going to be fourth down and about, looks like two and a half, three yards. Looks like they sent out the punt team. Yep. Rafael Sierra, number 44, back to punt to receive for Ewing, number six. Mickey Gibson. Gibson's all over the place for Ewing. I'm going to turn the lights on in here so we can actually see. I don't know how bad it's going to be, but we'll give it a shot. Small's in motion to that far side. Great snap. Good punt. Good roll. Horns trying not to touch it. Up down at Ref about the 15. Yeah. Referee says it's down right about the 20. And even though I don't think it hit anybody, but they'll take it at the 20. Ball was really down at the 15, but. So Ewing back on the field for the second time. Horn's got to figure out how to slow down Ewing's offense. And as we've seen on Ewing's last drive, they like to move quickly too, just like Pemberton a chance for the defense to respond and try to slow down their pace. Rodriguez is the quarterback now for Ewing, number one. There's a flag on the play. False start on Ewing. Doesn't even look like anybody was really set. And somehow they had a false start. Now we'll move back to the 15 where we thought we were originally going to start off. First down. Getting some free yards. First on offense, there was a false start in the first play for Ewing. Now first play here. In motion. Hand off inside to Gibson. Good tackle there by the Hornets. I think that was number six, Antonio Flores with the stop. Pick up about one for Ewing.
Gibson's in the backfield. Three wide receivers of this near side for Ewing. Ewing calling in the play. Everybody's got play sheets on their wrists. Rodriguez in the shotgun. Looking to pass. Incomplete. Quick slant to number 17, Rafael Torres. Incomplete. So that'll be third down and about 14 for Ewing. Huge play coming up for the Hornets. They can force a stop here, force the punt. They'll get the ball back good. about midfield. Yeah, potentially get the ball on good field position. A huge play coming up here. Three wide receivers to this near side, one to the far. Rodriguez in the shotgun, back to pass, blitz by the Hornets. Wide res or receiver, running back screen. Good hit in there. Gibson on the reception, didn't get much. I think that's a hit by number five. Highsmith, first broken up by number 31, Fahim Sims. He was in the backfield, came up a little slow. But that'll bring up a huge fourth down for the Hornets. Great defensive stop by the Hornets defense. So the Hornets, or Ewing will punt. You can see the Hornets receiver back still inside Ewing territory. I can't see the number. Might be Highsmith. Another flag on the play. Ball start again for Ewing. They're going to back up another five yards. Looks like Henderson, Henderson back to yeah. receive the punt. Yep. Now that he turned a little to the side, I was like, oh, that's an eight, not a five. And he's so Raynard's at the 40. Yeah, the Ewing 40. As we said, great opportunity here for the Hornets to pick up good field position. Short, Short punt. punt right to the 30. Bumble picked up by Ewing. Ewing has the ball. Henderson tried to make a big play. The ball bounced up. Just took a little bit of a bad hop. Recovered by number 17, Rafael Torres for Ewing. And the defense will come back out on the field. I liked Henderson try to make the play. He could have just let it go and try to make something happen. Ball bounced right at the 30 yard line. Bounce up to Henderson. So, 3.38 here in the first quarter. Keith Carter with Kevin Emmons. Roger McDowell field. The Hornets are up 7-6. Beautiful first night game for the Hornets. Homecoming. Stands are full. The band is playing. Handoff to number 20. Kavanaugh for, I'm sorry, Tolliver for Ewing. No gain there, looks like. Maybe a gain of one on the pitch there. So second and nine for Ewing. Throw 35. Three minutes left here in the first quarter. Rodriguez in the shotgun. Behind him is Tolliver. Three wide receivers to this near side. Roll out to the far side. Throw, incomplete. Good defensive play by Freddie Zabata Smalls on that running with the defender. Great coverage downfield there. Didn't Rod give him much room. Rodriguez with a little bit of a dangerous throw. Pass was intended for number five. James Joseph on that far side. Smalls with the play. Big third down again for the Hornets. See if they're going to be bringing some pressure on Rodriguez. Tolliver in the backfield. Fake handoff. Roll out. Big hit. They're calling it a fumble. Fahim Sims, Sims with, the with the a hit. great play. He's the one that made that big defensive play last time. Didn't make the tackle, but was in the backfield disrupting Ewing on the last play. So looks like they're going to punt again here on fourth down. Defensive unit with another great effort on this drive here. Henderson back. This time he's just about midfield. Middleton back to punt. I think that's him, 13.
Left footed punt. Ooh, almost blocked by Davis. Punt right to midfield. Just over midfield, right at the 49-yard line. The Hornets will take the ball. Cole Davis, about a millimeter. He even came off the field saying, that was almost hit my hand. <laughs> great pressure by the Hornets and great defensive stop. They picked up Henderson, who tried to make a play on the, off, on the, the punt, the first punt for Ewing. And the defense comes right back on after the turnover. Another big stop for them. So the Hornets will take over right about, looks calling like, it the 47 or so. Looks like they're on 47 there. An opportunity here to add to their lead. And 207 in the first quarter. Davis to this near side. Sharky in the shotgun. Two wide receivers to each side. High Smith in motion. Fake hand off to him. Sharkey keeps it. Pickup of about two. Sharkey with carry and about two. Anthony Hamilton with the block in front of him, number 50. You know, Keith, and you mentioned earlier the crowd being filled here. We got people down the fence line. The line at the success stands real long. Just a great atmosphere here tonight for the Hornets' first ever uh, home night game. It's a beautiful night. Sharky gets it. Looking for a pass. Highsmith has it. Three in front of him. That was a loss of about a yard. A little bit behind the original line of scrimmage. Great Hi. defensive play by Ewing. Highsmith on that reception. So third down to this near side. Hornets got two wide receivers to each side. They're pinned on this near side. Sharkey looks like he's got nobody open. Runs. Another loss. Looks like they're going to have to punt. So it's fourth down. Sharkey a little slow getting up. Fourth and 14 for the Hornets. So they're going to punt. Back to receive for Ewing is Gibson. The up man, number 27, Jamil Robinson. Time winding down here in the first quarter, just about 20 seconds left. Ewing's got a late player coming on. Hornet sent a man in motion. Nice snap. Nice kick to the far side, away from the re return man. Right about the 25. There's a flag on the play. Back in the, behind the line of scrimmage. Of I don't know what happened and we're pushing and shoving right about where the reception or the ball was downed. So there's flags, two different locations. I of course look back to the original flag and then there was other flags thrown over there. Players were separated, they gotta keep their cool. They're playing a great game. Referees will try to sort this out. That was the end of the first quarter, but a little bit of confusion now as to the penalties. Fish is discussing the play. Hornets still lead 7-6 here after the first quarter. Definitely dark in the stands, dark in the concession area. But they, it is definitely full out there, you can see. All right, here comes the call. I wish the ref had a personal foul on the Hornets. And then a dead ball, unsportsmanlike, on Ewing. That's what I got from all those calls. Great job by the cheerleaders on this near side. Coach Johnson having a discussion with the official.
So I don't know if Ewing gets the opportunity to re-kick or have the ball kicked. Let's see, because it looks like the official on the side, on the middle, looks like he's ready to step back, I guess maybe 15 yards or maybe half the distance. Because the first penalty was definitely against the Hornets, they said, but that was during the play. So I'm not sure if Ewing gets an option of a uh, re-kick. Now the referee's going over to the other side, Ewing side, to discuss the play. Looks like Ewing coach just asked him to push it back and then maybe re-kick. talking to the athletic director before the game he said they checked the scoreboard they checked the lights they had everything done they rechecked it like Thursday Friday and then some of the score you can't see he was so upset he was like we checked it we looked Looks like even the players aren't sure what's really happening. Maybe the kicking team's coming back on. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it looks as though the Hornets will punt again. Yep. So I guess it'll be a, an untimed play. So they're pushing back 15 yards for the original on the Hornets, and then they go back. After the dead ball, I guess 15. So is that the original place that the penalty happened or the uh, original play? So it's, it'll be about the 41-yard line. James Joseph back to receive for Ewing. Around the zone 25-yard line. Rafael Serra, number 44, he's back to kick. He's going to be right about the 30 to receive the ball for... Ewing. That's what a guy Gregory in motion. Floyd in motion. Nice snap. Nice kick. Nice hang time. Recept received at the 40. He's at midfield. One blocker in front. Stayed in bounds. And that's a touchdown. touchdown. Number six, was that Gibson with the reception? Makai Gibson with the touchdown, about a 70-yard punt return touchdown. He picked the ball up right about his 30-yard line. Had some blockers in front. That's a great play there by Gibson. Kind of looked like he was going to call for the fair catch and took it, made a couple guys miss, and he was going down the left sideline. Ewing now up, 12-7. Looks like they're going to come on for a two-point conversion. Still a little bit of confusion for Ewing. They don't have enough players on. They're running on their other next player, the new player now. Definitely confusion here in the last, now it's zero seconds, but it's been the last like three or four minutes. Rodriguez in the shotgun. Tolliver behind him, flag on the play. Flag on the play. Dead ball, offsides on the Hornets. Half the distance to the goal. Some mistakes here late for the Hornets. Rodriguez in the shotgun. Tolliver behind him, man in motion. 
Good hit in there again for the Hornets. Crawley on the play, number two for the Hornets. He's made a couple great stops on those two-point conversions. So it brings the score right now, 12 to seven. Ewing's up at the end of the first quarter. We'll take a break and be back with second quarter action here at William McDowell Field. really stepped away or not, but there's a great look here at William McDowell Field. Keith Carter along with Kevin Emmons. Hornets are down right here at the start of the second quarter. They're down 12 to seven. Ewing's kicking off after that big return from Gibson to put the Blue Devils up 12-7. Henderson back. It's short, this near side. Picked up by number 22 or 28. I'm not quite sure. Let's see. Oh, it's 28. Gabriel Rivera Gets to this to near side. 42. Yeah, great run. An opportunity here again for the Hornets to respond. Ewing with 12 unanswered now. Big possession for the Hornets here in the second quarter. They want to answer. Sharkey heading out. Henderson, wide receivers that far side. Davis and number 11, Javiri Foster. Also, looks like Highsmith's going to the far side. Henderson in the backfield behind by Sharkey. Hand off to him. Big run in the middle. Good spin. Flag on the play. Gets up to about midfield. Let's see what the call is. That's an area we're probably holding, I'm sure. And it is holding on the Hornets. That'll drop them back. Of 10 yards, so it'll probably be about first and uh, 17 or so for the Hornets. Right about the 35-yard line. Three wide receivers to the far side. Sharkey in the backfield, in shotgun. Looks like Henderson back there with him. He had a nice run last time, but holding penalty. Hand off to him, good block. Henderson was still fighting. Gets to about the 40-yard line. About so about 12 or 13 yards, so second down. To the announcement for the cheerleaders. All alumni cheerleaders, will you please report to the track So second and 13 or so, we'll call it. Please report to the track now. Three wide receivers to the top. This might be a throw here. And it is. Sharky back. Quick Good throw. throw. Highsmith has it. Big block coming up by Hornets. Yes, to the near side. Good cut back. Big play by Emmanuel Highsmith. Great block there by Julian Diamond. He's the tight end. He was on this near side. Great precision now on that throw by Sharkey. Tight window there with defenders. Timing was perfect. It results in a first down for the Hornets. Big play that the Hornets definitely needed. Highsmith and Henderson in the backfield. Miss snap. Highs Sharky picks it up. Tackle from behind for a big loss. It's about a 10-yard loss. Sharky with the carry. Number 
13. Reese on the sack there. Sharky and Henderson weren't sure who was picking it up, and then Sharky picked it up, and by then Ewing was already in the backfield. So second down. Tough loss for the Hornets, but at least they avoided the turnover there. Yeah, you don't want to turn the ball over, especially after that big play from Highsmith. Wide receiver screen to Davis, big pickup. About the original line of scrimmage and about two extra, so probably about a third and eight looks like. Great wide receiver screen. Sharky's finding his open receivers. Gets him up to about the 20 yard line. Hornets now have three wide receivers, four wide receivers to this near side. Henderson. Flores, Highsmith, Foster, wide receiver to the far side, probably Davis. Sharkey Lone back there in the backfield. Quarterback keeper right up the middle. Big run. First down. Great blocking by the, the offensive line. Good play call there, too, with four guys on the outside, third down. Most people in this stadium probably anticipate a pass there. They were able to pick up the first down with the run. First down on the Ewing 11. I'll get the offensive lineman that made that big block. Big first down for Sharkey. Looks like they're at the, it's hard to tell, but about the 11 yard line. Look past the high Smith. Smith. Blocking up front. Touchdown! 11 yard touchdown reception for the Hornets. Wait, there's a flag on the play. There is a flag on the play. One of the Ewing players was unhappy, thought maybe he was getting hold or something. Let's see what the call is. Holding on the Hornets. So that negates the, the big play. So that'll be a 10-yard penalty. Pushes the Hornets back. So first down still, probably about 16 yards to go. Sharky in the, Sharky shotgun. In the backfield, yep. With Henderson, fake handoff, quick throw to Flores. He gets it in the backfield, fumble! Out of bounds. Looked like it was thrown more forward, so they might put it back to where the original fumble happened. Looked like Foster was able to get a hand on that and knock it out of bounds. Flores got stripped there. So big play though, still second down. All that little craziness and still it's second down and two for the Hornets. They're in the red zone. Ewing still leads here, 12 to seven, with 8:52 left in the second quarter. Looks Hornets like driving. Looks like the Hornets can get a first down without a touchdown. Touchdown, Highsmith! Touchdown. Great block in there by Anthony Hamilton. I found out all the, the linemen that are doing the great blocking up front. So Anthony Hamilton's 50, Jorge Rivera 52, Elijah Garland is 55. Josue Sanchez is 56, and Damian Brown, 69. Those guys, they'll never get their names in the stats. They don't get the runs, they don't get the receptions, but they're the ones that block for Highsmith for that three-yard touchdown. They're the ones doing all the dirty work, getting it done in the trenches, open up them gaps, leading the scores like that. Hornets go for two, and Henderson runs it, and he's in there. He's in there. So I believe, if my Pemberton math is correct, I think it's 15 to 12. Want to take a three-point lead, 8.47 left here in the second quarter. And we see Highsmith down there celebrating on the sideline with teammates and looks like alumni down there. It's a guy we've seen take some snaps at quarterback earlier in the year, and now we're seeing him get it done at running back, wide receiver. So it's good to see him contributing in many different ways. 
about six or five, five or six minutes ago, we said when the Hornets got the ball to start the second quarter, this is a big drive for them. They started back far. They had a penalty here or there. They had a fumble almost in the end zone or before the end zone. They got all that situated. Three-yard run for Highsmith. Two-point conversion for... Also had a touchdown negated on that drive, too, by a penalty, and they were yeah. able to bounce back and respond to overcome that. Great drive there by the Hornets overall. Great blocking up front. Great execution on the plays, both passing and rushing. It results in a three-point lead for the Hornets here in the second quarter. The offensive line looks good. They did some great blocking for Sharkey on one play, Highsmith on the touchdown, even Highsmith on the, the sweep that was called back, like you said. Middleton's going to kick off. Gibson back for Ewing. 8.47 left in the second quarter. Hornets are up. 15 to 12. William McDowell Field, our first night game. Got the lights on. Field looks great. Middleton short kick right in the middle. Fumble. That one's going to be possibly the Hornets ball. They're all pointing this like they have it. And they do. Looks like number six. Flores. Anthony Flores. Antonio Flores. Antonio with a big hit also. And pick up. Great play by him. Middleton with the great kick right in the middle. Almost like no man's land out there. Ewing tried to scoop it up. Flores with a great hit. Big turnover for Ewing. Hornets offense coming back on the field. Taking over at Ewing's 34. Great field position after that final recovery. 8.43 left here, second quarter. Another huge opportunity for the Hornets to extend this lead. Flores and Foster to this near side. Looks like Highsmith and Davis to the far side. Sharky in the shotgun. Henderson next to him. To his right. Snap. Fake handoff. Big throw. He's got Highsmith open. Over throw. There's a flag on the play on this near side. Ball start, looks like, or maybe a legal uh, formation. That's Sharkey's first pass that was really just a little too high. But he had Highsmith. Just overshot him, but still a penalty on the play. Now they're calling it ineligible downfield. Ineligible receiver downfield. So Hornets will back up. Five. Still first down. First and 15 for the Hornets. Sharkey back in that familiar shotgun position. Three wide receivers to this near side. Timeout for Ewing. More confusion for them. That's their first. Timeout, Ewing. Horns coming to this near side. I noticed that the cheerleaders have some of their boxes that they stand on and that show like class, different classes, all lit up with lights and stuff like that. And they just had the alumni cheerleaders on the field. There's a great look inside the Hornets huddle on this near side during the timeout. Hopefully they can get another touchdown here on this drive. It's still first down. First and about 14 from about the 39 yard line here at William McDowell Field on homecoming and first night game here for the Hornets. Bleachers are still pretty much filled to full capacity. Still got people down the fence line. Nice little line to touch stand. They must be serving something good over there. We'll have to send somebody over there. Davis coming out to that far side. Three wide receivers to this near side. Sharky in that shotgun. Henderson lined up right beside him. 
Fake handoff, throw to Highsmith on this near side. He's got wide open space. Go blocking in front, down the side. Touch to the back. 10. Huge Just pickup. almost to the 10 yard line. That's just a nice wide receiver screen. About to the 12 yard line, inside the red zone. Hornets on the drive now. Clock's running. 8.26. No, it's not running. Now it is. Stops for the first down. It's been the Hornets' bread and butter so far on offense. You know, the short passes, establishing the blocks up front, and just getting yards after the catch. Great block there by Foster. Good fake by Sharkey. Gets it to Highsmith with the run. Cuts in. Looks like he stopped about the 10 yard line. Maybe a pickup of about one or two. So we'll have second down. Hornets again could get a first down without scoring in this red zone area. I don't know if you've seen it, Keith, but Sharky, when he dropped back there, avoided a huge sack. Dropped his shoulder and was able to duck and really just saved yardage there. I did notice the virus, or the defender run right past him after that shoulder fake. Sharky's playing smart out there. Like you said earlier, he just jumped on the ball, took the big sack, but didn't turn it over. That time he just did a little shoulder fake. Avoid the sack. Drops back. Throw to this near side. He's got him. Touchdown! Javier Foster. Javier Foster, number 11. Great 11-yard touchdown. Great play call there. Great route running. Overall good effort there by the offense. Great throw by Sharkey. Let's see if they go for two or they go for a field goal. Looks like they're keeping the offense on there. Great throw by Sharkey. Put it right in the corner. Only his receiver, Foster, could catch it, and he did. Looks they're like going first. One point, point yep. here, yeah. Good for them. This will put them up by 10. Middleton back, set the kick. Fake. Fake, Sharkey. Sharkey, throw. He's in there already. He caught it. That's uh, Davis. And they're calling it a two-point conversion. He caught it in the end zone, and then it was stripped. So two points to Davis. 23-12 to 12 for the Hornets, up by 11. 16 unanswered points here for the Hornets now. Great play by the Hornets. Good play call. Sharkey's in there as the holder. A lot of times, you're, you know, you're, you're – Quarterback is the holder. Huge drive there after the fumble recovery on that kickoff. A lot of momentum favoring the Hornets right now. There's 720 here in the second quarter. Hornets are up 23-12 after that great drive for the Hornets. Great look at the cheerleaders. The band's up, I can hear them. Gibson back for Ewing to receive. Great kick last time by number 13. Najee Middleton. Little blooper right in the middle by number 33 in that area. To here, Harris, there's a nice little zone in there, like about 15 yards behind the line. And that's where he, we kicked it last time. It's almost like a no man's land. And then Flores with the big kick. Further kick this time. Number 17 for Ewing, Torres. Good hit by special teams for the Hornets. And it looks like the Hornets have, Hornets have the ball. Looks like they stripped it. Yes, the, the, the number 12 for the Hornets. Isaiah Johnson comes out with the ball. Got a huge special team play for the Hornets. Send up good field position once again. It's a good chance here for the Hornets to open up this game here. That's two big plays by special teams on the last two kickoffs by the Hornets. Flores last time, Johnson this time. Hornets about the 
27, 28 yard line. Seven minutes, 11 seconds left here in the second quarter. Hornets are up. All the wide receivers to the far side. The only person really on this near side is uh, Julian Diamond. He's the tight end. Handoff. Henderson. Cuts. Good cut in the middle. Almost to the 15, it looks like. There's a flag on the play. Holding on the offense. Hornets holding on that play. So that'll be a 10 yard. That'll push him back. Still first down. Hornets have recovered well from some of their penalties. And most of the plays or penalties that they've had have been on first down. Very few of the penalties have come second or third down. And they've recovered well. This will be some play that'll put them right back, normally back to the line of scrimmage. And then Hornets have got second and 10. This one's back a little further. It's about the 41, 42 yard line. Foster going to the far side with Davis and Highsmith. Diamond, the tight end, comes out to this near side. Running back screen. Henderson. Henderson's got it. Diamond blocking. Pick up a big pick up there. Just like we just mentioned, they're up to right around the line of scrimmage. Got even a little bit further there. I don't know if anybody could pick that up, but number 15, Julian Diamond, he's a, a tight end. He's in there as like the another lineman, but he can go out and block and catch the ball. And he's made a couple big blocks for the wide receiver or, or that time running back screen. So second and... Call it 12, somewhere around there. Two running backs behind him. Hand off to Henderson. Good cut there. Looks like he's going to try to cut it back. Good recovery by Ewing defense. Down at about the 30-yard line. Third down. They have to get inside the 20, about the 18-yard line for first down. Hornets technically could be in four down territory here. Just getting ready to say that four down territory, so could see a run here, try to get him back closer to the first down marker. They don't need to pick it up all here. If they pick up a little bit, half, half the yardage. One on one coverage to the far side with Davis. That could be an option. Roll out to that side. He's got him. Comes back to it and. Incomplete. Davis actually dropped it. Great play by Sharkey. Still could be four down territory if they decide to go for it. Looks like the Hornets are trying. Sharky's even coming over trying to debate. Can we stay on? Let's go for it. Let's run this play. They can run the same play. Davis might have just lost it in the lights. It's a little bit different tonight with the lights. You know, it depends on the angle that he was receiving it from. He was open. It's good ball placement, just a tough angle, you know, to come back. And he was already downfield a little bit. So to adjust to that, it's a hard adjustment, but. Good and I didn't ball. really walk the field, you know, because the game started a little before the lights went really in effect. But now that light might be right in his eye. Sharky gets it. Looking for Davis again. Up and out. He's got him. Incomplete. All the Hornets or the Ewing Blue Devils could do, Gibson was just throw his hands up. Davis was open. Just couldn't make the play there. So fourth down. Turnover on downs. For the Hornets, Ewing will, Ewing take, will take over. over. Yes, about at their own 30-yard line. So really, no hurt there. Taking the opportunity, going going towards the end zone. You gotta oh. like the aggressive approach by the Hornets too. Being up, uh, you know, two possessions here, trying to keep the foot on the gas pedal and try to, you know, score some more points here, ahead of halftime. Hornets are up 23 to 12 here in the second quarter. There's 5:56 left from William McDowell Field, homecoming. Kevin and I, both alumni. Looks like an option play. Good spin by Gibson, number six. Mickey Gibson, he's been all over the place. Horn it down on the play. Looks like number seven is about as small as down. Trainer on the field. Could feel a 
Breeze getting a little bit cooler through the window here in the in the box. So we'll have a timeout there. The bat of Smalls, he's up. So 5.41 left here in the second quarter, about midway through the second quarter. Hornets on defense. Looks like it's going to be second and one. The bat of Smalls, he's back up. Looks like he's not even going to see the trainer. He's just walking around. He's probably ready to go back out. So second down, one yard to go. Just inside the 40 for Ewing. One wide receiver to the far side. Actually, three to the far side because there's a slot. Behind the line of scrimmage. That's the Gibson. Pick up of nothing. So that's third down and about one. Ewing likes that little wide receiver screen, but they caught it about three or four yards behind the line of scrimmage and then barely make it back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, when you catch it that far behind, it's kind of hard to adjust. But they seem to you know, stick to that play call. Big third down for the Hornets. Looks like they're trying to blitz in the middle. There's a flag on the play. That's a false start. Good play by the Hornets' defense. They made some good plays earlier on. Make Ewing jump here. So now that's five free yards for the Hornets. So now it'll be third and six instead of third and one. Looked like they were blocking up the middle. Hornets have been very disciplined so far. They've had their shares of penalties, but you know, Ewing continues to get false start calls. Good energy up front by the Hornets. Look like Crawley and number 34, Jerry Weir and Flores were all going to come in on a blitz. Flag on the play. Big sack. False start on Ewing. Looks like the Hornets are going to take the result of the sack. Big defensive play in there by the Hornets. Looked like 52, George Rivera on the sack. Had a little assistance there as well. It's good defensive play by the Hornets. So it looks like it's about fourth and 12. Looks like Sharkey's going to be back there to receive the ball. At about his own 40 yard line. Puts a guy Quarterback. in. Quarterback. Does some receiving. Does some returning. He's back. Let's it bounce. Smart play. Inside the 30. He's down at about the 27 yard line. Now, with four minutes and 12 seconds left here, this would be a good opportunity for the Hornets to kind of eat up some clock, you know, get a lengthy drive going here and get some points. Ewing gets the ball to start the second half, so that'd be the ideal situation for the Hornets. Try to eat up as much time as possible while getting points out of it. Three is the minimum that you want, but if you can get six, seven, eight, put some more distance in between the Hornets and Ewing, that'll be the optimal play here. So right about the 27-yard line, three wide receivers to this near side. Coming in in their usual set. Henderson in Sharkey the backfield. and Henderson, they're back there. Two wide receivers on the near side, two to the far. Sharkey drop back, quick throw to Flores. At the 30, 35. Close to a first down. Pickup of nine or 10, that's gonna be pretty close. Good job there by Flores, holding on to the football. Ewing defender tried to come in from behind. Looked like he tried to knock the ball loose. Flores was able to hang on and they're close to a first down here. Second and short at about the 36 yard line. Those quick throws are working really well for the Hornets. Another, Another quick here. throw, Flores. Nobody within five yards. That's a first down. First down, out of bounds. Nope, nope. They'll stop the clock for the first down. About the 39 yard line. Hornets look like they could do that quick throw either side. They have, I think, Highsmith and Davis to the top. So they can do that same play to that far side if they really wanted to. Clock's running now. Fake handoff. Sharkey keeps it up the middle. Pick up a five, seven. Lowers his head. First there. down. 
Right to midfield. Great play by Sharkey. Clock stops for the first down. Right at midfield. 3.13 left. Once the ball's set, the clock will run. First down. Hornets are back in that hurry-up offense. They got could catch Ewing on too many men. Four is nope. lined up here behind Foster. Another short pass it's situation. It's a big throw. Goes Foster long. on the run. He's got, got him. Beat. Incomplete. Exactly three minutes left. That looked was like a he great had the play. There. Yeah, he looked like he had the defender beat there. He was, just a, he was at a hard angle to try to adjust and turn and receive the ball there. Good play call, though. They had Flores lined up behind Foster. It looked like another short play situation. And they went long there, one-on-one -on -one man coverage. Well, they've run that short play, like we were saying, a few times. Then all of a sudden, they, they try to break it deep. One wide receiver to the far side. Bunch formation to this near. Sharky in the shotgun. Henderson. Takes the handoff, has some running room, Roman. picks up a three or four. Third down. You got to credit Ewing there with the stop. Yeah, big stop. Could have got a lot more out of that. If he breaks that tackle, he could pick up another five, ten yards, maybe even more. Two wide receivers each side, third down. They still could be in four down territory if they choose. Quick throw to Flores. He's got the first down and more. Pick up a... About 15, 20 yards, almost to the 30-yard line. Call it to 31. Now, we don't have the exact statistics in front of us right now, but that's like Flores' seventh, sixth or seventh reception of the game, all in those short play situations. He's doing a lot of the yards after the catch. He'll pick up a – he'll catch the ball three yards downfield and pick up six, seven, ten, fifteen yards. Three wide receivers to the far side. Two running backs in the backfield. Hand off to Henderson. Big run, blocking in Got front of him to the 10, 15-yard line. Flag on the play. Maybe a face mask. Looked like a face mask there on Ewing. Great blocking by Highsmith in front of him. They had the two running backs in the backfield, Highsmith and Henderson. Great running by Henderson. Couple Hornets clapping. 211, so that was probably on the other team, right? So looks like it. 211 left here in the second quarter. Hornets bringing in new players. And after the penalty, they'll be down at about the 10 yard line. First and goal here. The Bata Smalls. Looks like they're in like a big bunch eye formation with Highsmith and Floyd Jr. and Henderson. Henderson has it. And big blocks by Ewing. Stuff there. Three or four of the Ewing players on the tackle there. Only a loss of about one there, it looks like. Hornets got to remember the clock's running, 155. I think they still have two timeouts if they choose. But they've been going hurry up offense pretty much almost the whole game. Sharky, Sharky back. Looking for somebody to get open. Big sack for Ewing. That's a loss of about 15 yards. Nobody was open. That's when you just want Sharky to just throw it away. Don't take that big loss. So third down. About the 23, or no, that's the 25, sorry. Huge play there by Ewing. You know, with Pemberton at about, their, at about the Ewing 10-yard line. Minute and, minute and some change. They were kind of in control of the tempo. Now Ewing can force Pemberton to kind of pick up the pace a little bit, force them to have to pass here. Third down, the clock's running. One minute left. Third and about 25. Ewing jumps off. That'll stop the clock. That'll get five yards back for the Hornets. So that'll make it about third and 20. Hornets offense is going to run their third and 20 play. Hornets doing a good job keeping Ewing off balance so far. Davis to the far side. He's got single coverage on that far side. And he's been open a couple times. Clock is running now. 41 seconds. Sharkey gets it. Highsmith cuts middle. He's got some running room if he decides. He's looking for an open player. Flores trying to come over. Incomplete. He got a penalty. And there's a penalty on the 
flag on this near side. Looked like it could have been a pass interference in the back of the end zone. We'll see what the call yeah, it is. It looked like he got there a little early. They're going to discuss it. See if the call, because it's in the... Looks like there's another flag at the line of scrimmage also. So there's multiple flags. Flag at the line of scrimmage could have been holding on the, the Hornets. Here's the call. Ineligible downfield on the Hornets. Pass interference. So those penalties will offset. So that will they'll replay third down after all that craziness. 29.3 seconds to go here in the half. What happens is normally once the linemen see Sharkey on the move, they start blocking for him, and then they wind up getting too far downfield. And then they Sharkey decided to try to throw it. So third down and 20, 29.3 seconds left. Foster and Flores lined up here, near side. Flores in motion, fake hand off to him. Sharkey looking for Flores is open. Big hit by Ewing. Hornets might want to try a, a late field goal here. 16 seconds left. See what the Hornets do here on fourth down. They're going to stop it probably with about three seconds left. Yep, 3.4 seconds left. They might try for a field goal. We'll see what they do. Or they might keep the offense out there, go for one big play. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they did. They kept the offense on the field, try to go for a big play. They anticipate Ewing to line up deep, so you know maybe find someone underneath, try to get some good blocking, as the Hornets have been doing a good job blocking early on. I don't see any kicker, punter. I see the Hornets offense staying out there, so we'll see what happens. Hornets still up here, 23 to 12, with three seconds left in the half. Ewing will receive the ball to start the second half, so can anticipate that Pemberton goes for it here, tries to get some more points and build that lead, give them a cushion going into the break. They have plenty of options. They could do some wide receiver screens or they could just do a Hail Mary. Looks like Ewing's got all their players. Nobody even really on the line. Oh, maybe some of the linemen now coming up, but everybody on the goal line or closer. So we'll see what they do. And prevent formation. Sharky back. Surveys the field. Runs. He's got him open. Flores. Oh, just out of the end zone. Flores was open, too. So that'll be the end of the first half. Hornets are up 23-12. I'll recap all the scores right before the start of the third quarter. But the Hornets are up 23-12 for Keith Carter. Or for I'm Keith Carter for Kevin Evans. We'll be back with second half action after these words. It's time to put your toys away. It's bedtime. I'm um, just a little longer. Five more minutes. Boy, are you ready to go? Almost finished, Mom. Five more minutes. You're gonna be late for graduation. James. Okay, I'm going. To all the parents who gave their children the time to discover their passions. Thank you. I am a nurse. A firefighter. A college student. A mother. And I am an American soldier. I will always be ready. For every storm and disaster that threatens my community. I will always be there to protect my neighbors. My family. And my country. We are the Army National Guard. We are the Army National Guard. We are the Army National Guard. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about part-time service. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Second Half Action. If you're just tuning in, don't adjust your TV. This is Parent Township Hornets football 
first night game in the history of the school here at homecoming. I'm Keith Carter, along with Kevin Evans. The Hornets are up 23 to 12. They're gonna kick off to start the third quarter, second half action. I'll recap the scoring. So to lead off, Sharkey with a one yard touchdown run, opened up the scoring for the Hornets. There was a extra point by Middleton, made it seven nothing. Then, Ewing made a 34-yard run by number 20, Tolliver, made it 7-6. They missed the two-point conversion. Then there was a 70-yard punt return by Gibson, made it 12-7. They missed the two-point conversion. Then the Hornets made all their scoring. Three-yard run for Highsmith, two-point conversion for Henderson. 11-yard touchdown reception by Foster, made it 21-12. And then the two-point conversion, Davis made the reception, made it 23-12. And that's where we stand. Hornets just about to kick off. Middleton to kick off. Back to receive is Gibson for Ewing. Right in the middle. Bounces in front of him. Nice hop to him. Over the 30, 40. Good tackle in there by the Hornets. Down at about Middleton. 43. Middleton kicked off. Made the, the tackle. Ewing offense back on the field. Hornets made some great defensive plays at that second quarter. Ran off whatever the points were after the 12-7. Yeah, 16, 16 points. Answer, day up. That's my parent and math still in effect. <laughs> Homecoming, so I graduated in 94. Kevin, you said you graduated 2016? Yes, sir. 2016, uh, Hornets went 9-2 and two that year. Don't call me sir. I'm not <laughs> that old. Yes, I am, but handoff in the middle. Tackled in there. Looked like the ball might have squirted loose. Maybe at the end, but Ewing still has it. Crawley on the tackle. Up to about the 46-yard line. Second down. About seven yards. Ewing will try to respond here, try to cut the deficit to one possession. Both Shoot. quarterbacks are very comfortable with the uh, shotgun formation. Gibson behind him, two wide receivers to the top, two to the bottom. Flag on the play. It's like some movement false up start. Front. That's uh, I'm gonna say the fourth false start for the offensive line for Ewing. That's a big penalty, puts him back. Second and 13, inside the 40, or just about the 40. Rodriguez in that shotgun. Gibson way back behind him. Pitches it. Good tackle in there by the Hornets, number 52. Jorge, George Rivera with the play. He plays both sides. He plays offensive line and defensive line. Good sack in there or tackle in there for a loss. Probably about five-yard loss. That's a big third down for Ewing. Let's see what they can do. Hornets defense coming out strong. In this third quarter. Hornets defense has looked good on third down so far. Three wide receivers to this near side. More than likely a throw. Blitzing by the Hornets. Pass incomplete. Intended for James Joseph. Covered on the play by number 11. Devere, Hamilton, or Devere Foster. Devere Foster. So that will bring up fourth down. Ewing will kick. Reynard Henderson already going back to receive. Looks like he's going to be waiting right about his 40-yard line. Bryce Sims, number 23, I think, is back to kick for Ewing. Henderson looking to make a big play. Good guy in motion. Good snap. Oh, almost blocked again by Davis. He had the same play happen the first in the first half. And now it'll he be is, down at about the 39. He is getting in there. He just threw his arms up like, man, I'm getting so close. Both times. First time he came off, I saw him, he was like, it almost it almost hit my hand. He had a couple more getting, opportunities tonight to get it. He made, it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Yep. <laughs> so Hornets will take over. Big defensive stop. 
early in the third quarter. Offense in the huddle on this near side, just out of pitcher. They'll be coming in to frame now. I never know if the Hornets really are confused or if that's part of their play because they have four wide receivers on this near side now. And it looked like it was almost part of the play where they're not sure where to line up, not sure which way to go. There's only three players on this near side to block for Ewing. So they have an extra man on this side. Sharkey keeps it. Five yards. Pick up about four or five yards. We've seen this play in the first half when it was a third and long situation where they lined up four wide receivers on the same side. And we, we all anticipate a pass, and they did the same thing. They ran right up the middle, and it, it worked out well. About halfway there to the, the first down marker. And I almost feel like the Hornets are setting things up because they did the same thing earlier with the Flores, you know, quick throw, quick throw, and then Foster on the big play. So they have four wide receivers. The defense only had three on this side, so they're out man. So, you know, Hornets are, I think, picking up on all the little plays here. Looked like a, almost try to be a wide receiver screen to Davis, incomplete. Ewing with the pressure there, had to get rid of it. So third down and we'll call it six. Hornets have to get almost to the 50 yard line for a first down. Hornets have been picking up third downs pretty consistently today. I don't know what the stats are. Looks like Manny Highsmith's lined up wide open there. Oh, here comes the defender. Cole Davis also lined up over here on the near side. Sharkey in the backfield. Drop back for a pass. He's got both players. Oh, overthrows Davis. So that'll be fourth down. Looked like both, both wide receivers were open. Highsmith and Davis to this near side. Just missed them. Great job in, uh, at halftime by the marching band and color guard. They had a little, uh, like, Arizona motif with, like, cactuses, and they had some howling wolves and stuff, but the, they did a great job. The band is small, but let me tell you, they, they were really loud, and you could, in the stands, I went out and just listened, and they did a great job. So we have Gabriel Rivera back here, set the punt for the Hornets. Gibson back looked like to receive. He's been back there the whole day. He had a return he's pretty much earlier. Over. Yeah, he's almost all over the field. High snap. That's the first high snap. He looks like he's going to keep it, and then he punts. Out of bounds. Great play by. Great adjustment there yeah. to get still be able to get the punt off. Wasn't I wasn't sure if he was going to, because it looked like he might have some room to try to run for the first down. But he just wanted to keep it simple, you know, not get sacked, not get blocked, or some crazy play happened. So he was able to get the punt off. Whether it was 10, 15 yards, still got it off and made a great play. The snaps have been really good all game. I've been watching every snap that he gets right in his hands. That was the first snap that was a little high. So Ewing will take over. Looks like... Tolliver's in the backfield. That's not Tolliver. That's number 23. Bryce Sims. Bryce Sims. That's his first carry. Tolliver was back there, too. He's in the game. Pickup of about three or four yards. So second down for Ewing. Hornets still up 23-12 to 12 here with a little less than nine minutes left in the third quarter. Starting to get a little colder. People are starting to put their gloves and hats on. High snap. Good tackle. Great tackle there by Henderson. Getting it done on defense as well. That was Tariq McKinney, number 10, that took the snap for Ewing. Most of the time it's been Mateo uh, Rodriguez. That time it was McKinney, though. Looked like McKinney was thinking about pitching it, too, but the defense was able to crowd the backfield, get back there in time. And, and great play by Henderson. Third down. That was a loss of probably about two yards. So it looks like third and seven. About the 34-yard line for Ewing. 
McKinney in the backfield now to take the snap. Hornets bring pressure. Hand off. Good tackle in there. Fourth down here. Another great stop by the Hornets. They've been very disciplined on third down tonight, as we said before. Antonio Flores on the tackle, number six, right at the feet. Textbook tackle. Let's see if uh, looks like Ewing's going to punt. It's fourth down and probably about five yards. Henderson back to receive. He's about the 35-yard line. <coughs> He's waiting to catch a ball, make some plays. Not many uh, of the punts have gone to him as far as in the air. They're punting away from him, which is smart by Ewing. Good punt there. Yeah, that's a great punt. That's the best punt of the day. Bounces about the 34, 35-yard line. Hornets will take over on downs. 6.44 to go here in the third quarter. Hornets are up 23-12. No scoring here in the second half. Hornets defense playing strong. Not that they need any more points because the defense is doing the job. But let's get some extra points. Put a little cushion on the board. A touchdown here is, is big. If they can make a touchdown on this drive, that'll put them up. 18 points. And we're Hornets. about midway through the third quarter here, so they could also eat up some time here, take a three-possession lead. And they've had some uh, some good runs early in the first half, so they can go back to the runs. They have Highsmith and Henderson in the backfield. I remember one or two runs for Henderson that Highsmith made some good blocks. There's a handoff to him. Highsmith blocking. Good play by Ewing this time. No gain there, so second down. Great job by Ewing defense that time. Looks like uh, Ewing almost had like four linebackers into the game that time. Looked like Henderson wanted to go outside originally and he made that cut back in. Defense was there waiting for him. So good stop there by the Blue Devils. Three wide receivers to the top. Henderson in the backfield. Sharkey gets it, drop back, looking for a pass. Foster, Foster on the play. Probably back to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be third down and 10 or 11 yards for the Hornets. Flores checking into the game now. He has a handful of receptions tonight, so we'll see if the Hornets go to him here. Really specializes in those short yardage catches and uh, making something happen after the catch. Foster had that short catch there, but it looks like Ewing has changed up maybe a little bit of their coverage where they're moving more towards the ball once it's up. Davis on this near side. He's got the single coverage. He's been getting open, so that might be an option for him. Sharkey back. Pass to Davis. Incomplete. Drop by Davis in the middle. A little behind him, it looked like, so that'll be fourth down. Hornets look like they're going to punt. I'm sure Gibson will be back for Ewing to receive. And despite the outcome of that play, that was a good uh, good route there. You identified Davis being one-on-one uh, -on -one there in man coverage. He ran the slant route across the middle. Kenrick Davis. There. Yeah, Kenrick Davis to a punt. Even if he would have caught it, he still would have been short by about three or four yards. Yep. So it was definitely a tight, tough catch. Davis to punt. Gibson back to receive. Guy in motion. In motion. Another high snap. They adjust. Oh, there's a big penalty. No. They're calling it that it was a block. I don't know if he got the ball. That was a hard hit on Davis. Referee is indicating that it was a tip. So no penalty there because of the tip. So short punt. <clears throat> Looks like that was actually uh, Gabriel Rivera on the punt. Looks a little shaken up, but he's all right. Oh, I thought it was, uh, oh, that's Ewing's 28. Sorry. Sorry, Gabriel. It helps to have the right roster in my hand. I have both, so. Yeah, Gabriel's been doing all the punting today. 
Most of the snaps have been good, but last one or two were a little high. Gabriel Davis with a – got hit there. So, Ewing will take over in their – Pemberton's half of the field. Probably about the 43. 43. Yep. Rodriguez back in the game. Penalty on the play. Looks like we got some movement up front again. Ewing looks like they're using a, two different uh, quarterbacks. They've been using Rodriguez and McKinney. Rodriguez in now. So marching back five yards. Ewing killing themselves a little bit. You know, just when they're trying to make a play, trying to get forward. 4.59 left here in the third quarter. Hornets are still up. No score yet in the second half. Gibson on the catch, on the the run. Pickup of one. Good tackle in there by the Hornets. Second down at about the 47, it looks like. And like you said, it looks like, you know, Ewing's going with two different quarterbacks now trying to switch up their looks. And they haven't had an offensive score since the, early in the first quarter, their first drive of the game. So it looks like they're trying to switch their scheme up a little bit and get something going here in the second half. Hornets defense has been pretty solid after those two scores. Good there block in there. The flat 31. Raheem Sims. Raheem Sims, good play by him. It was almost like a backwards pass, but I think Sims batted it. Maybe they were even. Sims batted it behind. Great play by him. Hornets are reading a lot of those wide receiver screens and stuff. They are calling it a, a, a backwards pass. And that's a loss of 10 yards or so. So Ewing started on Hornet side of the field. Now they're back about the 43, 44 of Ewing. Looking at a long third down here. Yeah, third and about 25, 25 yards to yeah. go. Hornets coming in on a blitz. They're going to bring the pressure. Henderson, great pressure by him. Reynard Henderson and also... A very crawly number two was blocking up in the middle. Great pressure up front and great coverage downfield. Ewing was looking for a penalty, but that ball was nowhere in the area of anybody because Henderson was coming in. Great defensive stop by the Hornets. It looked like Zafata Smalls in coverage. Sorry, Fred, if I uh, messed up your name there a little bit, but that was good coverage down the field. Forcing a fourth down here for Ewing. Looks like they're going to go for it. Nope, they're going to punt. Can't rule Hen out any fakes here, though, yeah. being the situation, but we'll see. Most Hen likely going to punt. Henderson's back. Punter away from him. Another solid punt by Sims. Bryce Sims for Ewing. Inside the 30. It's about the 27-yard line or so. They're punting definitely away from Henderson. They don't want anything to do with him receiving a ball on a punt and possible big run. Like you said, last possession. Hornets have time. They can run down the clock, run some plays. Four minutes and three seconds left in the third quarter. They're up by 11. Two possessions. Yep, up 23 to 12. As you said, it's a perfect opportunity for them to kind of eat some clock. Just really work on executing their plays here. Execute, control the game. They've done a great job so far controlling the pace of the game, you know, alternating their play calls between the pass and the run. They've done a great job staying balanced on offense so that they just continue to execute. They'll be fine, you know, moving forward. Not the Looks official like Ewing's talking calling to timeout, here. I thought, but maybe it's official's timeout. Hornets back to their four wide receiver set on this near side. Ewing has four defenders on the same side, finally. So the Hornets will take over. We've seen this formation a couple times tonight. Sharkey keeps it. Good blocking in the middle. Pick up of a first down and more. 
That play has worked, worked very well for the Hornets tonight. Three times, and they've been successful all three times. I believe two first downs out of it and another, another significant run the second time they ran it. Anthony Hamilton, I think he's playing guard. Let me see what, he, what he's listed at. Linebacker, defensive line. So he's defensive line, but he's playing over there, and then he pulls from his position as a lead blocker, has opened up Sharkey the whole time. Henderson, Highsmith in the backfield. Davis to this near side. Falls to the far side. Hand off to Highsmith. Takes it to the outside. Pick loss of about one. Good job by Ewing. Hornets now running the clock. 327 left in the third quarter. Second and about 11. Highsmith now coming to this near side with Davis. Henderson in the backfield. Flores and Foster on the far side. Sharkey in that familiar shotgun. Back to throw. Quick, Quick throw play. to High Smith. Good block Good block by, by Davis. Davis. Yes, to the outside. Prick up of a first down and more. Down to about the 35-yard line. Looks like he stayed in bounds too, so the clock will keep running. It'll stop for the, the chains to get set. And then once it's set, Horn's still in their hurry-up offense. Down to Ewing's 35 in Blue Devil territory. Three wide receivers, four wide receivers to the far side. Highsmith, Henderson, Flores, and Foster. Davis to this near side. Sharkey in the shotgun. Watch for big throw. Davis is open. Beat the receiver. Out of bounds. Got a flag just, here. Just throw out of bounds. Might be holding on the offense. No oh, personal foul on the Hornets. Hands to the face they're calling. So that'll be 15 yards. Still first down. Davis is getting open. That's his fourth or fifth time that he's been open. That play, that pass was a little bit uh, out of bounds. There was a couple that he might have caught, was dropped, or, you know, he's getting open, though. They got to find him. He's doing a great job running his routes, a lot of man coverage, and he's going to get one sooner or later. Same thing with the, the, with the, the pump blocks. blocks. <laughs> we kept saying it. We're like, man, that's the second time he was that close, and it's coming, it's coming. That's the important thing. At least you're running the route or you're making the play. You're getting to the punter, to the to, to an open position. So 15 yards back from the spot of the foul. Puts the Hornets on their side of the field. About the 44-yard line. First in 100 yards. They're calling it 35, I guess. That's what, or 30. Sharky drops back. Got him open. High Smith. Oh, just over his head. He had him. That's the second or third time that Highsmith has been open also. Just overhit him. Sharkey looks good, though. He hasn't really overthrown too many receivers today. He's finding them, and maybe he thought Highsmith was going to be a yard deeper. But great play by the Hornets. Great routes. They're running, getting open. Ewing definitely has to try to mark up. They're leaving guys running. Davis and Foster to the far side. High Smith to the far side. Julian Diamond has been getting open too. Number 15. He's the tight end. There's a wide receiver screen. A lot of blocking in front. Good block or good uh, tackle by number 13 for Ewing. Henderson on the reception. Reese. Puts him right at midfield. Third and a, a long mile, but Horn's just looking to run the clock. Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. No turnovers here. Make sure you're running the clock. And then if you have to on fourth down, then you punt or go for it, whichever you decide. I'm sure they'll punt if they don't pick up 100 yards, but. Sharky there he is. Again. Highsmith got him open. First down. Great catch Great there run. by Highsmith. Great placement by Sharky on the throw. Davis, great play by him. He came in as the inside receiver. And then Highsmith ran the outside route. Ran a loop around him and first down. 
These guys are making, getting open, and that's the important part. And then Sharky found him. Perfect throw. He has missed, like, by inches each time that they've missed. So he's not throwing, like, way over their heads. Maybe run by Henderson. Yes, inside run. Good tackle by Ewing. He doesn't make that tackle. That's inside the 10. Good tackle sure. by Chandler Williams for, for Ewing. That's a game-saving tackle right there. Henderson had a head of speed. Highsmith with some great blocking up there. That offensive line, big blocks that they've made all day. Davison Foster to the far side. Second down, running the clock. Under a minute here in the third quarter. Henderson next to Sharkey. Another handoff inside. Good block in there by number 50. Still Good on his run feet. Anthony Hamilton is making those big kick out blocks. He's pulling. And we got another first down for Time the out. Clock stops on the reset the chains. They're inside the 10. 34 seconds left here in the third quarter. Clock will be running. Hornets are back up to the line. Still maintaining the up-tempo offense. Hamilton coming over with another big kick out block. You guys watch on that play, number 50. If he does that same play, he pulls from his guard position, pulls all the way, and has a huge block for Henderson. So second and goal. There it is again, same play. Sharky, with Sharky the keep. keeps it though. Touchdown. He's got a touchdown. touchdown. Six yard TD. TD run for Shockey. Greatest time expires in the third quarter, too, so a great way to cap off that quarter. Same play they've been running. The only difference is that they had Henderson as another lead blocker, almost as like a fullback. Henderson pulled. I'm sorry, Hamilton pulled number 50. So. That puts a score to 29 to 12. Hornets in there going for a two-point conversion in the I formation under center. I love it. Something different. Roll out. Going for Diamond on the far side. Oh, just out of his reach. Great attempt. So two-point conversion. Fail there. But I love it. The Hornets are doing something different. They, they have not been under center all game. So we're heading into the fourth quarter. They're going third quarter, end of the play, two-point conversion. We're going to go with I formation and try to hit our tight end. And they still have an aggressive approach even with the lead. Most teams in that situation, there was less than five seconds left. Clock was running. They ran out there. They hurried up, got the snap off, and they executed, scored the touchdown. So they're staying aggressive, trying to, you know, maintain their composure, maintain that energy, and ride on that to the finish. And I'm telling you, Sharky's throws are inches away from either a touchdown a two-point conversion, a reception. You know, he's not missing, and he hasn't missed many. But when he does, it's very, very minimal. But they're looking good. Hornets are now up 29-12 to 12 here at the start of the fourth quarter over the Ewing Blue Devils. Gibson back for Ewing. He's the deep man. Sims. And I think number 11 out there, I think is Jalen White, are the up men. Kicking for the Hornets is Middleton. Crowd still looking strong here, even as the temperatures drop a little bit. The concession stand got a little less, so I might run down and grab a hot dog. <laughs> Don't have to worry about the <laughs> long line now. Not that windy, but Middleton's having a little trouble setting it up. So for those just tuning in, Hornets are up 29 to 12 over Ewing. At the start of the fourth quarter here, Hornets lost to Ewing last year, 14 to nothing, looking to avenge that loss here on homecoming. Nice kick. Gibson, little bobble at the 15, now 20, now 30. Brought down the 33 by a host of Hornets defenders. 
Looks like the main person was Tariq. I'm sorry, number 16, of course, is not on the roster. So, let's see. No. It looked like 16. Looked like Elijah Smalls, number 30, was in there on the tackle, too. Yeah. So, Ewing will bring their offense back out. We'll see which quarterback they decide to bring out. Great job by the band. I don't know if you guys could hear it. Them and the cheerleaders. Looks like Rodriguez is going to be in the shotgun. I think it's Bryce Sims next to him. Oh, no, Sims is in motion. Now he takes the handoff. Kicks it outside. Sims is on the 30, 40, 50. Good tackle on the far side. I think that's Antonio Flores. They've run that play a couple times to Sims. He's the man in motion. He'll take the handoff. Good pickup there for him. Big pickup by Ewing. That's their first big play probably, you know, since early in the first half. Hornets defense has been really strong here after the first quarter. Second quarter into the now second half. And off inside. Good tackle in there by the Hornets. Number 52 is Jorge Rivera. Couldn't tell who else was in there. It was a couple Hornets players. Great defensive play. Loss of one. So second and 11. Hornets just gave up a big play, and then they answer right back. Three wide receivers to the near side. Drop back for a pass. Good play in there. Number 15 for the Hornets. Julian Diamond, I think, is the one that got his hands up. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, that is him. Now he's coming off on third down. Got his hands up. Blocked it. So third down and 11. I'm sure this is four down territory for Ewing. They're down by 17. So I think they're, they're four down territory, I'm, I'm going to guess. Blitz coming. Ball was never snapped. Definitely some movement up front. <laughs> the only person that didn't say go was the, the center. He held on to the ball and never went anywhere. So that's another loss of five. So this will be third and I'm going to say 16, right about midfield. My guess would be this is four down territory, like I said. That would be my. But we'll see what Ewing does if they don't pick up a lot of yards. Rodriguez is going to be in the shotgun. Tolliver is going to be behind him. Three wide receivers to this near side. One to the top. Hornets now coming in on a blitz. Pick up. Good catch there. Great tackle by number 11, Foster. So, looks like they picked up about seven yards, so maybe we'll call it fourth and six. James Joseph on the reception there, number five from Ewing. Ewing has to get inside the 35 to pick up a first down. They are going to go for it here on fourth. About ten and a half minutes left here in regulation. Great job by Foster. Just kept him in front of him, made the tackle. It's a great job understanding the situation. You know, sometimes you sacrifice that reception, but, you know, as long as you don't give up a ton of yardage, force the fourth down. Hornets coming. Got him open. Incomplete. Great play by the Hornets defense. Turnover on downs. Fourth down pass. Incomplete. Hornets take over. First down. Great defensive play by the Hornets. We're here. Homecoming. 2019, William McDowell Field, Keith Carter, along with Kevin Emmons. Hornets are up on this first ever night game for the Hornets on a Saturday. Beautiful weather here in November. F 
Foster and Flores to this near side. Sharkey, fake handoff, throw to Flores. Good catch and run. Cut back, still in bounds. Looks like the ball might have gotten knocked loose. Clock still running though. It. Yep. Nope. So pickup of about one. We've seen that a couple times where they do that fake play to, to Flores and then Foster on the go, so they're always setting something up. Well, Flores here is closing in on double-digit receptions for yeah, sure. He's got to be a 10 or 11. So second down, we'll call it 10. Quick throw to Flores now. Runs in the middle of the field. Pickup of about three. Third and about seven for the Hornets. Third seven for the Hornets. About nine minutes to go here in regulation. They're making quick plays. Hornets line up, Sharky in the shotgun. Fake throw. Oh, baby. Dart there to Sharky, Davier Foster. Sharky, he threw that hard. <laughs> that was that setup play, though. He tried to hit, fake the fake the Flores, and then go to Foster. And he threw that 100 miles per hour. <laughs> He's ready for baseball season. That was the throw you need in that situation, though, when you fake the short pass and you got a tight window like that. A little too hot to handle, but he had the right idea there. Foster's even a little upset right now. He's like, man, maybe I should have caught that. Maybe I could have. But that was that was a hard throw. He's even patting on himself on the chest like maybe that was my fault. But he's going to watch this play. He's going to be like, man, that was a hard throw. So Hornets will punt. 8.40 to go here. I don't even have to look, but Gibson's back to receive for Ewing. Rivera back to punt once again for the Hornets. Streak Brown in motion, number 23 for the Hornets. Nice snap. Good punt. That's going to bounce in front of Gibson. Bounces right to him. Receives it. He finds a hole. He's going outside. Hornets got some guys down there. Good tackle right about midfield. Ewing will take over on downs after the punt. 8.25 left here in the fourth quarter. Hornets are up 29-12. to 12. I'm not sure whose idea this was to have a night game here or William McDowell Field, but it looks like it's been a pretty much success from start to finish. I never asked whose idea it was because we've never had a, a night game. Obviously, no lights really here, but they brought in the lights and, you know, everybody looks like they're having a good time. A little cool, but, you know, for the first week in November, the weather's not bad. It could have, uh, you know, a foot of snow, who knows, but... Looks like this is pretty much a success. Horns coming in. Oh, big hit. Henderson on the hit. Incomplete. Also in there was Sims. Yeah, he had a, a, a wide receiver open, but he was forced to throw it quick because of Henderson and Sims in the backfield. So incomplete pass, second down. Right at midfield. Just Ewing's a, trying to get the plays in. Just a great move for the community overall, you know, having this night game here tonight. A lot of people coming out. And as you said, a lot of people seem to be enjoying themselves. Hornets with stuff there. Antonio Flores, big tackle. Third down, pick up about three. Yeah, it's great for the community. You know, it was packed. It's still packed. The only thing that's not packed is a concession stand. Lots of people here. I see lots of current students. I see lots of former students. So it's great for homecoming. Third and seven. Four down territory for Ewing. Probably the rest of the night. 
Clock's running, 740, fourth quarter. Sims in there. Oh, big play. Deflection there by Rivera, number 52. Good play by Rivera, Sims in there. Big play by him. Rivera almost like caught the ball. Now he's making the gesture like he could have caught it with his face. And as we were saying earlier, you know, the offense staying aggressive, the defense is staying aggressive too, continuing to bring the pressure, especially in a third down situation like that. Looks like Ewing's actually might going to punt now. That's kind of surprising. I thought they were pretty much four down territory the rest of the game, especially on the other side of the Hornets. But maybe they're not moving the ball, so. Maybe a little trickery here. Maybe not. We'll see. Henderson back to receive. Hornets are paying attention. It is a keeper. Good play by the Hornets defense. Davis over there, he was the initial player. We were talking about him almost blocking the punts a couple times. Sims is over there as well. And Diamond. Also, Crawley, he's last out of the pile, so he made one of the big plays too. Great, great special teams play by the Hornets. They were ready for it. But like we were saying, Davis almost blocked two other ones tonight, and he was back there. So I don't know if that was a design trick play or just didn't have a choice because of the pressure by Davis. Hornets take over on the turnover on downs right at midfield. 29 to 12, they're up. 724 left here. Three wide receivers to this near side. Hornets in their usual shotgun formation. Henderson in the backfield to the right of Sharkey. Sharkey drops back, looking for a pass. Airs it out. To Davis. Overthrows him. I'd like to see Sharkey under center again once or twice. Just some other different plays. Confuse the defense even more if they can. Because even when they were under center on the two-point conversion, Diamond got open. Just missed him by a hair. So, Highsmith and Henderson in the back. Oh, Highsmith now coming out to the side. Henderson in the backfield next to Sharkey. Hand off to Henderson, kicks it outside. First down and more inside the 30. Yes, he's inside the 30 now. Probably 29 yard line, big pickup. Big pickup there, first down and he'll stay in bounds. So once to get set up on the sideline there, clock will keep running. Hamilton, Rivera, Garland, Sanchez, Brown. That's the offensive line that you don't hear much about, like I said, in the second quarter. But there they are, pickup of uh, Probably about 20 yards or so. I think they were right about midfield. Great run by Henderson. Great blocking up front by that offensive line. Letting the clock run down a little bit. Sharkey in the shotgun. Has Foster open on this side. Just over, just threw him right behind him. Foster was open though. The uh, Ewing secondary plays off those wide receivers just a little bit. Let's them catch the ball in front of them. And the Hornets have been dangerous. That is yards after the catch, especially Antonio Flores. First half, he was catching things three yards and then run for seven or more yards after the catch. Well, speaking of Flores, here we go with this formation again with Flores lined up behind Foster to the near side here. Ewing might blitz in the middle. Looks like they're trying to pressure. Fake the blitz. Sharky looks like he's going to run it. Throws. Davis. He's got it. Spinning. First down. I think Cole was too wide open that time. Got a little excited. He caught the ball three different times. <laughs> yeah, bobbled a little bit there, but good focus there. Good hand-eye coordination to stay with it and pick up the first down. First down, clock's running. Three wide receivers to the side, 6.20 and running. Highsmith and Henderson in the backfield. Highsmith almost as a fullback. Little dump off to Highsmith, run to the outside. Flag on the play though. Maybe caught Foster as a hold in there. Another well-designed play though for the Hornets. Just a little bit of holding. Probably Foster on this outside. 
They've been running the play with Highsmith and Henderson is like the Highsmith is the fullback and Henderson is the running back. This time they said, okay, we're not going to run it. We're going to dump it off to Highsmith and try to run it outside. Great design play, but just a hold in there. So I'll push him back 10 yards. Like we said earlier, though, still on first down. Most of their penalties are on first down, like we said earlier. So first and goal from about the 14-yard line or so. Davis to the far side. Highsmith, Flores, Foster the near. Henderson in the backfield next to Sharkey. Hand off to Henderson. Kicks it outside. Good tackle in there. Still, still on his feet. Finally taken down. Tackled by a host of Ewing players. Diamond coming in. Nope. He's going to stay out. Maybe he's going in. Yep. Floor is coming out. So it looks like the Hornets will have the ball at about the 19-yard line. Second down. Second and 19. Five and a half minutes to go here, fourth quarter. That's what I was going to say. The clock's running. Hornets still up 29 to 12. That's all the Hornets have to do. Run the clock. Even if it's a pass, just make sure a little pass and run that clock. Sharky for the throw. Has Highsmith open. Touchdown. 19-yard touchdown reception by Highsmith. Great throw by Sharkey. I mean, he he has hit guys wide open. Great routes by the receivers. Middleton back here to attempt the extra point. Middleton may won the first half. Hasn't been out there since, at least for extra points. Can't rule out the fake either. We got Cole Davis lined up, kind of in a slanted position, Sharkey. With the hold. It's down. Blocked. No good for Middleton. That brings the score, though, to 35-12 to for your Pemberton Hornets. 5.06 remaining here in the fourth quarter. PA announcer announced the score. Everybody's happy with that. Great job by the band and the cheerleaders. You can hear them. Try to let everybody hear the band when they're playing and the cheerleaders are out there. I think the alumni cheerleaders headed out there for that cheer also. Middleton's going to kick off. Gibbs it back there. 5.06 left from William McDowell Field. Beautiful night game. A little chill in the air. Could see your breath. In the, in the booth even. <laughs> Middleton the kickoff. Nice kick to this near side. Ewing gets it about the 20. Right at the 31, 32. Tackled in there by about six or seven Hornets players. So Ewing will take over. 35 to 12. Try to get their offense going a little bit here. Hornets defense has been pretty stingy since the first quarter. Hasn't really let much happen. Hasn't let Ewing get in the flow of too much of anything. Four 
fourth quarter action. McKinney back under center for Ewing. Fake handoff, he's gonna keep it. Tackle in there by Davis. Trying to see who's at the bottom of the pile. 52, Rivera was in there again and. I thought 34, of course. Yep, 34 was in the mix. Jerry Weir. Looked like Davis and Weir were the first two on the scene. Ewing, I thought, would be in a little bit more of a hurry. Trying to get the play. Is McKinney for Ewing. It is kind of a little bit different that, you know, even the linemen have the plays on their sleeve. You know, normally the quarterback is going to tell them what they're running. Hand off on that sweep to Sims, number 23. That's been their most effective play. Well, you know, to add on to that, you know, Ewing coming in is a fairly young team. So I think maybe, you know, the coach is trying to get them, you know, to adjust and really, you know, learn the offense and stuff like that. So that could be the reason. But, yeah, it's funny you bring that up. You know, we don't really see that often with the linemen. You know, reading the plays as well. But, you know, they're even though they're down here, they're moving, you know, a little slow. I think they're really just trying to, you know, work on, you know, on the little things, you know, perfecting some of the fundamentals. And that's that wide receiver sweep to Sims seems like it's really effective. Wide receiver sweep this way. Picked up by the Hornets. Fumble, though. And the Fumble Hornets on the recover. Play, yeah. That was a wide receiver sweep from Jalen White. I couldn't tell who recovered it. Well, it was, was hard. It 52? Is it Rivera? He seems to be the most celebratory, and he's already on the sideline. So, Well, it was hard to see because of the angle because you had a defender penetrating from this side, and I just was looking down to the sideline, and I seen the players on the sideline, you know, pointing, pointing, signaling. So I was like, well, we'll see what the referee has to say here, and it was a fumble. So Hornets take over possession. Three minutes, 42 seconds left here in regulation. Well, they're even flashing the turnover belt down there. Hornets look like they're putting in some of their second string or backup players. New linemen. Keon Joyce looks like he's coming out. Number three. Soft he's one of the quarterbacks. Center. Yep, good. Good to see. And also look like uh, Elijah Smalls, I think, is number 30. He's uh, the running back in the backfield. Looks like they have a whole new line also. Back to throw. Ooh. Big sack there. Sack there by uh, Aaron Ford. Number three on Ewing Jr. Sharkey's coming back in. and Looks like he's going to line up at wide receiver, though. Yep, Smalls is going to come out. Davis still out there, and Foster and Flores to the near side. Highsmith is going to be next to Joyce. Some great experience for Joyce because Sharkey's a senior. Hand off inside to Highsmith. Still on his feet. Wrapped up there. It looks like they'll whistle the call. Whistle to play dead, I should say, on forward motion, forward progress. Third down there at about the 47-yard line. Looks like Jay Gotti has checked into the game along with number 77. Justice uh, Cheem Cheemton. Hornets facing third and long here. Two and a half minutes to go in regulation. So they got some new linemen into the game as well. Joyce drops back. Little screen to Diamond. Big tight end. Pick of about 12 or 13 yards, but still short of the first down. That'll bring up fourth down. Timeout. Oh, there's a flag. Sorry. Calling dead ball. Nope, not dead ball. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on Ewing. That's a 15-yard penalty. Penalty against Ewing was roughing the passer. 
2.14 left here in the fourth quarter. So I guess it's 15 yards after the catch. That should bring up a first it down. It is a first down, yep. Who are still holding on to a 35 to 12 lead here late in the fourth quarter. I'd like to see Joyce, because like we said, Sharky's a senior. Joyce, just a sophomore. Get some playing time, especially with some of the experienced wide receivers. Some of them won't be here, like Davis and Flores, but it's a good opportunity for Joyce. Quick pass there to Sharkey. I was trying to see if Foster, what his age is. Foster is a senior He's a as senior well. also. So it looks like Diamond, Julian Diamond, number 15, he's the tight end. He's still a sophomore as well. Just trying to go over, like, the offensive players as far as wide receivers, if anybody else will be back. And then Highsmith, obviously, he's a senior as well. So mostly he's, Joyce is out there with some seniors, except for Diamond. Well, Diamond is a senior himself. He actually uh, transferred in from uh, Medford oh, Tech. Oh, did he? Yep. Oh, he is. I'm sorry. Joyce on the run here, though. Staying on his feet, picking up some extra yards. Can scramble a little bit. Nice run by him. We're down to 109 here in the fourth quarter. Nice homecoming game today for the Pemberton Hornets. A minute nine left. First. First down from about the 11-yard line for the Hornets. Joyce having a little bit of equipment malfunction. So the Hornets will take a timeout. Hornets didn't give up any points here in the second half. Actually, since the first quarter. They top. rattled off 28 unanswered. They were down 12-7 at one point, now up 35-12. to 12. Hornets defense really locked it down after that first quarter. They didn't let anything happen after that. couple big plays, but they everything the big plays happened from like 30 to 30 in between those areas, right around midfield. Nothing inside the red zone. I don't even remember them really being down close to anywhere inside the 30 of the Hornets area. And another thing is we've talked a lot about their defense. They've also had some good execution on special teams tonight to help set up some drives that led to scores. So, you know, just a good all-around effort from the Hornets thus far. That's what and you need, the three phases of the game, the offense, defense, special teams. Joyce coming back in. Highsmith set beside him. Three wide receivers to the far side. High snap. Throw to Diamond. Good tackle in there by Ewing. Diamond with his second reception on this drive. We've seen him a lot tonight with some excellent blocking. Here he is now reeling in some catches. Second down. Clock's running. Under a minute. 44 seconds now. Joyce has made a couple good passes so far. Hand off to Highsmith, kicks it outside. Tried to reverse, had nowhere really to go on this side, tried to cut it back. That's third down, loss of about two. Clock's running, only 20 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Joyce looks like he's still trying to get a one more play or two more plays, try to get a touchdown here. Three wide receivers to the far side. Down to 10 seconds. Joyce takes it, looking for a pass. Quarterback keeper up the middle. Escapes pressure. Five, and touchdown. He's into the end zone, touchdown. Keon Joyce, the sophomore, coming in with the quarterback keep. 11-yard touchdown run. They still have to try the extra point, I believe. That pushes the score to 41 to 12. 
I guess they don't have to try the extra point. And they Looks like it. they're lining up. Big win here. Two in a row for the Pemberton Hornets. I won't recap everything because 41 points. That's a great game by the Hornets. Beautiful night. Beautiful win for the Hornets. That's two in a row. I think they have one game left. Is that correct? They play uh, Rancocas Valley on uh, the night before Thanksgiving, and they have a consolation game coming up. They will travel to take on Cherry Hill West. Not sure yet on the date. It's uh, either next week or the following week, but they'll take on Cherry Hill West next. But as you said, you know, a good performance here by the Hornets, dominating fashion, 41-12 to in the school's first ever home night game. And that's the way you want to do it in your first ever home night game. You know, you had a, had a sellout crowd here pretty much, you know, maximum capacity in the crowd. Guys lined up, up and down the fence. Just a great atmosphere overall, and the Hornets were able to come through with a huge win. Huge division win as well. Yeah, those division wins are huge. So for Kevin Evans, I'm Keith Carter. Thanks for joining us, and have a good night.